2020 was quite the year for fighting games. Due to the global pandemic, all offline events were cancelled and now we live in the online tournament era. However, new games came out and old games got updates, so the time has come and so have I. So, without further ado, I present to you the 2020 fighting game year in review. Grand Blue Fantasy Versus is the latest game from Arc System Works. Grand Blue Fantasy Versus is a 1v1 fighting game based off of the popular mobile game of the same name. However, unlike most of Arc System's fighters, Grand Blue is anime in aesthetic only. It actually plays more akin to something like Street Fighter. Initially, the game had a lot of hype behind it, attracting players from all kinds of communities. Unfortunately, due to COVID, the game got around a month of play before the entire world shut down, pulling the brakes on the game's momentum. It's a shame too, because the game is quite fun. The characters are fun to play, the battle system is unique, and you know, its accessibility options are actually quite well thought out, and they aren't just tacked on or patronizing to newer players. The game does have two glaring issues though. One being the price. At time of writing, it's almost been a year since its release and it barely goes on sale, maintaining that $60 price point. The times it has gone on sale, it's barely gone below 40 Additionally, there are season passes and cosmetic passes, which just adds more to the cost if you want everything. This ties into the second problem, the small roster and DLC. Grand Blue's roster is painfully small for a fighting game, and if you want more, you have to fork over some extra cash for the DLC. Fighters are about $7, or the character passes are $30 to $35. So if you want all of the characters in the game right now, it's gonna cost you well over $100, which is a high entry point for a new game, when other games like Street Fighter, Tekken, Dragon Ball, they're much cheaper and they have more content. Grand Blue is in dire need of a price cut because it's just too expensive for most to take a leap of faith on a relatively unknown property, at least in relation to the fighting game sphere. Also, it doesn't help that it has delay-based netcode, especially in this online era. Grand Blue is a great game, and I'll stand by that. But it would be even better if more people got the chance to play it, and if you could play online with good netcode. Hopefully, when things go back to normal, Grand Blue will get its time to shine again. And we're already at our final new release of the year. This one should be familiar to those who watch this series. Coming in with its fourth revision, it's Undernight in Birth EXE Late Clear. Undernight is an anime fighter developed by Soft Circle French Bread. Clear adds the new character, uh. Oh, uh, um, Lord, uh, Lord Keva? Lorkava? Uh, while changing some things from the previous version. All that really needs to be said, it's a pretty standard update. I would like to note though that this update is completely free. So if you want to play uh, Lord Kava, Lord Kiva, you only have to pay for him. So if you already owned Undernight Inbirth EXE Late ST, you have clear. I think that's pretty cool. One thing I thought I'd mention is, I've heard from some people that the netcode has gotten worse from the last version, so do keep that in mind. However, they do plan to implement a rollback netcode, so keep an eye out for that. Undernight is an anime fighter that's a bit slower than its competitors, but it also has its own mechanics and quirks that make the game unique. With its in-depth tutorial, it's perfect for someone who wants to get in the fighting games for a reasonable price. Check it out. And believe it or not, we're already at the end here. There were only two fighting games released in 2020. A very slow year, but for obvious reasons. It's not over yet though. Now it's time to talk about all the games that got content updates throughout this wonderful year. 
It wouldn't be a fighting game year in review without mentioning Street Fighter. Street Fighter V is about to enter its fifth and final season, but unlike other seasons, Season 5 seems to be the most ambitious yet with a new battle mechanic that completely changes how the game is going to be played. To release such a major update this late in the game's life is a surprise, but a welcome one. Street Fighter V has had a very rocky life, with highs and many, many lows. So I hope Season 5 ends Street Fighter V on a high note. Tekken 7 continued and concluded its third season and started its fourth season in 2020. Calling Tekken 7 controversial would be an understatement because during Season 3, one of the strongest DLC characters in Tekken history would be released, and his name was Leroy. Leroy dominated for a time and his reign was supreme. I cannot underestimate how good Leroy was, you just had to be there and see for yourself. Eventually, he did get his fair share of nerfs, and all was well. Other than that, Tekken 7 continues to move forward, and, you know, I'm curious. Are we going to see another season of Tekken, or are we going to move on to Tekken 8? The soul continues to burn with Soul Calibur 6's Season 2. Soul Calibur 6 had a good year. The season pass brought back fan favorites like Setsuka, while the balance patches kept the game fresh and interesting to play. I'll always say that Soul Calibur is the best bang for your buck fighter, because it has a decent amount of single player and multiplayer content. You really can't go wrong with it. It's unclear if Soul Calibur 6 will get a season 3. The question is, will this soul's flame flicker away? Only time will tell. Samurai Showdown began its second season this year, and a third season is planned for 2021. And it's even going to feature some characters from The Last Blade and Guilty Gear, which is rather exciting. I'll be honest though, I haven't really been keeping up with the Sam Show because I'm just more of a KOF guy and, you know, I'd rather just play that. It also doesn't help that this game has had one of the worst releases in recent memory. Every release was staggered after the PS4 release in June, and the game isn't even on Steam yet, but it's on the Xbox Series X? This definitely hurt the game's popularity, and its netcode is not doing it any favors. If any game needed rollback netcode and crossplay, it would be this one. The game might not be for me, but I wish SNK handled it better. They just keep releasing DLC characters while ignoring the netcode and content issues the game has. Getting the game to 120 FPS and adding crossover characters is more important to SNK than giving something to their fans, and you know what, I think that's just sad. Mortal Kombat 11 got two expansions, the first being Aftermath which added some characters but also added a new story expansion which isn't really something you see in fighting games. I like the idea of adding more than just characters to DLC, because modern fighters really have this serious content issue. Outside of online, there is usually not much to do, and the online is usually bad, so there's really nothing to do. Thankfully, Mortal Kombat 11 has good online and a plethora of content for every type of player. If you're going to pick up MK11, I think you already would have, but if you want to fight Robocop vs. Rambo, this is the game for you. This was definitely the biggest year Dragon Ball Fighters has ever had. The Season 3 update is the best the game has ever been. Besides being a normal balance patch, Season 3 introduced two new assists for every character. This makes making a team a lot more creative and personal, but also makes more characters viable on different teams. Although, it wouldn't be a Dragon Ball Fighter season without an extremely strong DLC character. And uh, this season's character is UI Goku, which, you know, it, in my opinion, lore-wise, it makes sense to me, but I know a lot of people hate fighting him. I have to say though, Season 3's DLC characters have been 
quite good. And, uh, you know, I wish they would go back and redesign some of the original characters to be more like Season 3 characters, because I feel like the Season 3 characters are very unique. A new mechanic called Limit Break was added to the game, which gives your character a damage boost. It's okay, but I think the game needs some more offensive mechanics, because right now the game can be very slow, and matches take way too long. The dragon's gonna keep rocking in the 2021, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a season 4, because it's a Dragon Ball and it, it prints money, man. Battle for the Grid is the Power Rangers fighting game that takes heavy inspiration from the Marvel vs. Capcom series. Battle for the Grid is in its third season, and the main reason I wanted to talk about it this year is Battle for the Grid not only has rollback netcode, but it has crossplay as well. I think that alone deserves some recognition. I'm not a Power Rangers guy, but hey, if you're itching for Marvel and DBFZ ain't cutting it for you, Give Power Rangers a try. This game deserves some recognition, and I hope it gets some. Dead or Alive 6 came and went. The game had so little marketing and fanfare, it's hard to know it even came out. In fact, the only news I hear about is how Koei Tecmo continues to have scummy DLC practices where the costumes cost more than a mortgage. They've also dropped support for the game, which is surprising. <laughs> I think I can say that this is the shortest supported modern fighter we've ever talked about on this series. I don't really know what to say to be honest. It exists. It has DLC, and it's not getting any more. And that was the belated fighting game year in review. It took a little bit of time for this one to come out, and I'll admit it was because of procrastination, but hey, it's here, and I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to 2021. We got KOF and we got Guilty Gear coming out, so it's definitely going to be fun. <laughs> At least for me. Like always, have a great day, and goodbye. <laughs>